Hello everyone and welcome to the actual second leg of the Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour, the Lindoris Abbey uh, Rapid Tournament, uh, which follows the uh, the Magnus Invitational, and it's a very nice game between Magnus Carlsen and Levon Arnon. Uh, in round one, Magnus defeated uh, Alexander Grishuk and Levon defeated uh, Alireza Firuzja. So here, uh, Magnus uh, gets his second white in a row, uh, as sometimes you know you, you do get two whites in a row, but uh, sometimes you get two blacks in a row. So it doesn't really matter. In the end, it should all even out. Uh, but here it's a it's a really really interesting game uh, as we have a case of the Petrov defense uh, where Magnus uh, offers a sacrifice of a knight. Now uh, the sacrifice is not accepted, but it's still a really really awesome game. So without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, it's a 12th player tournament. Uh, the, uh, after the preliminaries, uh, after the preliminaries, uh, uh, they go into the knockout phase. So uh, out of those 12, eight players will go into the knockout phase of the tournament. Uh, and we're going to take it from there uh, and also check out some standings. So e4 by Magnus and we have e5 by Levon. We have knight f3, knight to f6, so going for the Petrov defense. Uh, and knight captures on e5. We have d6, knight goes back and the knight captures on e4. And now knight to c3, the Nimzovich attack. Uh, we have knight captures on c3 by Levon. D captures on c3, which nicely opens up your uh, both of your bishops. Uh, and now bishop to e7. Levon prepares the castle. We have bishop to e3. And now castles. Uh, Magnus uh, goes queen to d2. He wants the castle queen side. And knight to d7. Now preparing to shift the other knight over to, to f6. Uh, we have queen side castle by Magnus. And now c6. Uh, preparing to grab more space in the center with the d5. Uh, also, now that the bishop is on e7, the d6 pawn is nicely protected. Uh, and here there are a lot of moves possible. Uh, the most often played is uh, king to b1, as you are expecting the queen to land on a5, going after that a2 pawn. Uh, and there are actually quite a lot of games that go into this, queen a5, c4, then we have a queen trade, and so on. Uh, but here we have h4 by Magnus. Uh, and okay, Levon grabs more space in the center, we have d5, and now bishop to d3, so uh, pretty much completing the development. Uh, and now, well, you could go queen to a5 here and try to sort of uh, get get the same idea going. We have rook to e8 by Levon, and now rook d to e1, not rook h to e1, as you do want your rook on the h file. And here there is one game in the database where bishop to c5 was played, but here we have knight to f6 and it is as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. So Magnus immediately went knight to g5, uh, which uh, try, which kind of tries to provoke h6 to get uh, some weakening in front of the king. But Levon first goes c5. He wants to play c4 uh, and get rid of this light square bishop. You don't want this bishop and knight eyeing the h7 pawn. Uh, and now c4 by Magnus. So of course not allowing black to push c4. Uh, and uh, here we have h6, finally going after that knight. And here uh, Magnus did spend some time, uh, I think it was around uh, almost 5 minutes, like 4.5 minutes. Uh, and in the end he played c captures on d5, so not... Uh, uh, not going back with the knight because there is actually quite a lot to calculate. For example, uh, usually you know that it's uh, it's pretty bad to capture the knight, but here it's not so simple uh, because after the knight is captured, of course you get h, h captures on g5. You no longer have d squares available for the knight, so you could go back knight d7, uh, but then you get d6, and it's uh, it's a terrible position for black. If you capture, then bishop h7 check picks up the dark square bishop, and if you go something like bishop to f8, then you go into bishop h7 check. Uh, king to h8 and now bishop to g6 check king to g8 and now queen d3 with some really nasty ideas uh, for example if the bishop is captured queen d5 check uh, forces checkmate as the rook still covers the h file and uh, if you don't uh, uh, capture the bishop if you play something else let's say bishop captures on d6 you try and give away some material this way then you run into the very unpleasant rook to h8 check uh, so nothing, uh, nothing for black to do here. King captures, bishop captures on f7. Now the bishop uh, covers uh, both of these squares and rook to h1 is unstoppable. So there's nothing to do here. So Magnus uh, at some point probably had this uh, over the board as uh, he did prepare for the Petrov during his World Chess Championship match against Corona. Uh, but it's probably been uh, quite some time since he looked at it. So he, he had to, of course, uh, remember if it was okay to leave the knight stranded on g5. Uh, but Levon decided to, uh, to ignore that and uh, he played c4. Queen captures on d5 is the way to go here. However, Levon played c4. Now it's probably 
uh, kind of a mixture of, of being greedy and tr and playing for a win. I think it was more playing for a win than than trying to be greedy. Here Levin wants to get this bishop away from this diagonal so he can finally capture this knight. And Magnus captures the pawn. Not much you can do about that. So h captures on g5, Levin grabs the knight. And now h captures on g5. We have knight to e4, d4 square now is available as the bishop no longer uh, guards it. Uh, but now queen to d1, the queen is also under attack, so Magnus goes queen to d1, now preparing queen h5 followed by queen to h8 checkmate. So bishop captures on g5, and now queen to h5, again threatening the same checkmate. Uh, and here 11 again goes for bishop captures on e3 check, uh, bishop to h6 would have been a, a much more resilient idea. Uh, it's not good for black, but it's uh, it's not at all clear immediately how to take advantage of it. For example, after bishop captures, you go back knight e6, you open up an attack to the queen and to the rook here. After the queen moves, yes, you're threatening checkmate, but first rook captures on e1 with check. Rook captures, now at least you've uh, got one of the rooks away from the h file, and now queen to f8, defending checkmate. And now it's, uh, you know, it's a position white, of course, is much better, but uh, you still have to find the correct idea. Uh, point is that this is the, the, the idea. You have to open up uh, this diagonal and now rook to e7 will be very strong. For example, bishop d7, rook to the e7 and now bishop to e8 guarding f7. And now it's, uh, well, it, it's just a wonderful position. For example, there's queen to h4. Now, uh, if the bishop is captured, you can always capture the knight. And if rook to d8, then you just go... Uh, bishop to f4, you guard the pawn, and black pretty much has no moves. You're up two pawns, uh, and uh, well, black is just completely paralyzed. Uh, but it would be uh, it would be much more resilient than bishop captures on e3. Uh, 11 played bishop captures on e3 with check. Magnus recaptured with the rook, uh, and now there's still the threat of checkmate. So 11 played f5. Uh, he gave himself uh, an escape uh, route for the king, but now d6 check, now opening up this diagonal as well. Bishop to e6 blocking, but here 11 just played queen to h7 check, uh, sorry, Magnus played queen to h7 check, and it was in this position on move 22 uh, that 11 Aranyan resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, it seems uh, a bit premature, but uh, he calculated everything out, and the uh, point is, uh, it's, a, it's a really funny idea, because after the king moves, uh, do you see uh, a really cool way to win the game for white? It's not only cool, it's also the quickest way to win. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find it while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the queen sacrifice. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen captures on f7 with check, on f5 with check. Uh, and uh, there's uh, not much you can do here. Uh, if you go back with king to g8, then just bishop captures on e6, of course, that's uh, just winning. But if bishop captures, then rook to h8 is checkmate, uh, as the pawn and bishop uh, prevent the king from uh, reaching the 7th rank. Uh, so after this queen uh, captures an f5 check, obviously we cannot capture, you could block maybe, bishop f7, queen captures an f7 is again checkmate. If you block with the knight, it's not much better, just rook captures an e6, and already uh, you're, uh, th there's, not, uh, there's nothing white can do here, rook to h8 is still coming, so here you could play rook captures an e6, but then just rook captures an h8, with check, king to f7, uh, and now you don't even have to go for the queen, just bishop captures here will be checkmate. And lastly, but not leastly, of course, uh, you could block with the queen, uh, but then just queen captures on e4, and again, there's not much to do. Uh, if you if you go for the bishop, then rook h8 check, just picks up uh, a lot of the material. If you go king to g8 preventing that, then just queen h7 check, king to f8, and now queen to h8 with check. King f7 and bishop captures on e6 check. And white wins a lot of material. Rook captures, queen captures here. And after, let's say, captures, captures, white is up a whole rook. And black does not have any, any counterplay or, or tricks. So 11 calculated all of this out. And after uh, queen to h7 check, he resigned the game. And uh, second victory for Magnus Car Carlsen in the Lindoris Abbey Rapid Tournament. We'll see how it goes. Uh, two more games today. And then we're going to uh, check out some other games and also check out the standings. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Lars Jacob, Scott Gorthy, uh, Patrick Richter, Thomas Connors, and Joseph Bassett for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the Lindoris Abbey Rapid Tournament and uh, whatever else uh, will happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.